MAGA. Why do you say America sucks? Joe Scarborough put this shit on blast the other morning when he said, to me, the most offensive lie is that we're a third world country, that our economy sucks, that our military sucks, that our democracy sucks, when in fact, just the opposite is true. And you know what? He's goddamn right. Because for all your whining about football players and women's soccer, woke sneakers, coffee makers, muffets, and beer. Y'all the only people I hear whining day in and day out about how much our country sucks. About how bad and broken and failing and falling apart we are. How we're no longer great and we're going to hell. How things were once better and you had more stuff that they, them, those people have ruined our country, that they've changed it, degraded it, poisoned it, or spoiled it somehow, that it's no longer your America. You talk about how our schools are ruining our kids, how our kindergartners are being groomed and indoctrinated, how our actual history, our accurate history, is designed to make us feel bad how our military is woke and weakened, our third world cities and towns are overrun, and that no one wants to work a real job anymore. So my question is, why do you hate America so much? I know, you fly a flag at your house and off the back of your truck, and hang it as a curtain in your TV room and plaster it on your head and your arms, your butt, your boobs and your legs and that you turn our stars into bullets and our stripes into guns and slap that big old sticker right there on that bumper of yours so them libtards know not to mess with you lest they want to get slapped with a menacing sticker since you're far too much of a coward to pull out a gun. I mean, I get it. You don't leave the house without at least 15 pieces of flag flare. But it seems a little strange to me you're walking around saying shit like our country is a joke and a Chinese made Star Spangled Snuggie and calling yourself a patriot. When a professional football player kneeled during the anthem to protest police brutality and you called him a traitor. Which reminds me, why are you now calling those who attacked our capital hostages? Why are you buying their stupid song? Why are Ashley Babbitt and Kyle Rittenhouse your heroes, but Harry Dunn and Michael Fanon are not. Why do you say we need someone to save us, to fix us, to take us back to time when things were better? What was better? And why do you keep saying that people are coming for our stuff? What people? And what stuff? Why do you complain about the cost of eggs and then send your rent money to a billionaire who you say is being persecuted for you? Why are his crimes fake? and the baseless allegations against Biden real. You want me to believe that wanting to protect my rights and the rights of my kids, to vote and choose, that me fighting to preserve my rights to stand against book bans and LGBTQ plus hate means that I don't love my country. You want my belief that we owe it to ourselves and to our future generations to tell the whole truth of our history and that we need to end the glorification of those who fought to enslave others on the basis of their skin color to prove that I'm ashamed of my country, that I want everyone else to feel that same shame. You want me to believe that leaving a pathway to asylum open for those seeking a better life is indicative of my master plan to erase your existence. Well, I'm really sorry to burst your happy little bigotry bubble, but none of what you think about me and my love for this country is true because I love this country. I love this country very much. I love this country so much that I wanna help it get better. I wanna help it help more of us, not less. I believe in the promise of America, I always have. And that means accepting that we are not perfect, that we have much work to do, that we have much to reconcile and to correct, that we the people are the drivers of this shared reality and that we can shape a future which is truly reflective of who we are and the tapestry of existences and diversity of experiences we bring to our society collectively as a whole. I believe that we are still striving to perfect this imperfect union and that we have the work of generations before us, if it's even possible to get there at all. Now, let me tell you 
why you hate America so much. It's because you played by the rules. You did everything right. You got a decent job, got married, bought a house and settled down. But that promise that was made to you when you were very small never came to fruition. You're in your 60s and 70s and you're still punching that time card and you're still in that same small house. And none of it is your fault. It's not because you're not particularly bright, not because you're pretty lazy. It's not because you never cared to pay attention in school. You didn't get the American dream as it was promised to you on the basis of one thing and one thing only, the color of your skin. Your whiteness wasn't a VIP card to a better life in the way you thought it would be. And you're really mad about it. And you don't want anybody else getting anything you believe you are entitled to. And let me tell you, you're not entitled to anything. That is a delusion. And it is one that will not serve you well in this life. And it is one that is aligning you with a wannabe despotic madman who would sell you and everyone you love down the river. Welcome back to the Are You Effing Kidding Me podcast. Brooklyn Dad Defiant. Hey, BDD. Hola. And um, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? It's like 70 degrees in Jersey. Are you effing kidding me? Woo! I got my Mrs. Mrs. Roper like thing happening here. <laughs> that was such a great show. It was a great <laughs> show. Now, 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 and we're all like, I'm like seven years old. Like, the kisses are hers and hers and his three's company. Like, wait, what am I saying? <laughs> well, there's there were so many of those sitcoms that went right over my head. But I I I watched them. I laughed. You know, uh, John Ritter was great with the physical humor and the tripping. Jack Tripper, right, was ironically his name, and he was tripping all over the place. What a great guy. What a what a big loss, too. Oh, such a big loss. I mean, that show, again, I didn't even really appreciate just how funny and he was because I was a kid and it was just funny when he would fall off the bar stool or whatever. But, yeah. like, looking back on it now, obviously, and that he did so many other things, including Sling Blade, right? Like, Wait, what? Wasn't he in Sling Blade? Are you talking about some people call it Sling Blade? Yeah, wasn't mm -hmm. John Ritter the straight man in that or I'm losing my mind? Uh, I don't know. That was Billy Bob. I know Billy Bob Thornton was. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because I'm going to have to <laughs> hold on a second. Because if I'm wrong, I know he was some people call it a cosplay. I call it a sling blade. Right, right. <laughs> and that was like right before he started dating Angelina Jolie. Like, well, how big is that guy's dick? Right. Like, how, how, <laughs> how does that? And she was so. That was such a weird thing, though. They had that vial of blood. Uh, yes. I think that was her brother's or. Yeah. Right. Or there was so much weirdness. Know. There was. Yeah. Okay. Cast Billy Bob Thornton as Carl, uh, Lucas Black and John Ritter as Vaughn Cunning. I knew I was like. I got to rewatch that now. I'm like, I'm, I really think John Ritter was in that. But but he, but yeah, it's just not what he's probably known best for. He's known best for Three's Company, obviously. Like, sure, sure. The thing about and Three's Problem And Problem Child. Problem Child. I also wrote yeah, about yeah. that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a deep pull, too. Um, but I think just real quick, we're on this Three's Company thing, because you and I have a way of derailing ourselves. Um, the thing about Three's Company, even as a kid that I never understood, it, it was like how it was that they thought as soon as they went behind that kitchen door that no one could hear anything that transpired. It was like this little swinging Christmas, this little swinging kitchen door. And as soon as they got back, there was like this sound barrier that nothing could penetrate. It was like, <laughs> what? It was a skiff. <laughs> right. Right. Three's company skiff. Yeah. I mean, hey, wait, come to think of it, I, I feel like the uh, the layout of that place is very similar to the I Love Lucy layout. That swinging kitchen door, the position of where the kitchen was. And didn't yeah. they have the um, those uh, folding, those uh, window that, uh, what do you call the thing? That, that opened um, above that? That, yeah. 
Yeah, they did. And in fact, I think they also had that on Happy Days, if I'm not incorrect. I think they had a swinging door and the thing that opened, or maybe I'm wrong, but I think they had that on that. But their kitchen was in a different position. But you're right about I Love Lucy's kitchen being off to the stage right. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And if yeah. you imagine just like that set, just seeing that set and knowing that it's all wide open, but from our, from our perspective as kids, it's like a real apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would trip me out, but it's fi- it's fine <laughs> that I never we never broke that what a fourth wall is that what they call it because mm-hmm. to live in that perfect bubble where it was real and it was a real people it's, it's, that's the beauty, right? Like the romance. The, and the the funny thing to me was that the whole the basically the whole premise was that he had to pretend to be gay in order to uh, to shack up with these two women, right? Um, and yeah, what, a, what a, uh, I guess, uh, an appropriately repressed <laughs> snapshot of that moment in time. Meanwhile, right? right. Meanwhile, the guy who's like a self-professed swinger, basically like Larry can get his own apartment. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a gigolo. And it's like, <laughs> sure, here's the keys, but you can't sleep. You can't sleep in a bed in your own room in this apartment unless you're gay. Cause you're different genders. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we've come a long way in some ways. Indeed. <laughs> Although Indeed. at the same time, we have not, and we were being pulled backwards. Let's so let's let's talk about that pulled backwards business because Joe Biden gave a State of the Union address last week. I know it feels like ten years ago. It wasn't even a week ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you and I've talked about this, and we've tweeted tweeted a lot about it. But I just want to talk to you, like in person, about yeah. your thoughts. What what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> I I think he hit a grand slam with yeah. that. He he surpassed my expectations a, a million fold. Uh, someone had asked me before. Oh, Chip Franklin had asked me before the show. We were we were doing like pre uh, pre uh, State of the Union coverage of State of the Union, and he asked me, "Was I nervous?" And I said, "No." And the reason I wasn't nervous is because in previous speeches. Previous press conferences, previous anytime he stepped in front of the microphone, I'll admit I was actually nervous. I kind of held my breath a little bit to see, is he going to stumble on his words? Is he going to stumble to the podium? You know, right. There were all these things going. And every time he steps to the mic, he basically put those fears to rest. So I was like, I'm not going to second guess this mm-hmm. brother. He's got it. He's got. But not only did he have it. Man, he had it. Like <laughs> he was, he was ready. He was. He laid a trap for them. You know mm-hmm. when he when he opened up. My, I think probably my favorite part. I mean, here's here's my favorite uh, moment from that. There was the Scotus when he called out Scotus. Um, that was feels okay. Yeah, was. He called them out, and then the the cameras, uh, <laughs> you know, switched to looking at uh, Scotus, and they're like, oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was that. There was the call and response thing where mm. he asked the the audience, he's like, Do you think it's fair that the billionaires don't have to pay as, as much tax money as the regular people? And everyone was like, No. And I was like, wait, I've never seen people do that in the state <laughs> yeah. of the union. Yeah. This is some new shit. Right. Oh, wait, I forget. Oh, yeah. Can I curse on this? Show? Yes, yes, yes. Please All right. fire away. Um, but my all-time favorite moment of of the uh the the show let's call it the <laughs> show right yeah. was when he opened up the discussion on the uh the immigration the 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 border security bill mm-hmm. and the republicans were like oh <laughs> and he was like oh you don't like that huh mm-hmm. you don't like that i was like go ahead joe get him <laughs> And then he rattled off a bunch of uh, statistics. You know, there's four thousand this, this and this much uh, funding for the um, blah blah blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember laughing <laughs> as often during a State of the Union as I did last week. And it was like, yeah, bravo, man, bra freaking vo. Yeah, and 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 there's so many components to it. Like, first of all, that he is a quick 
learner. I really do for for a guy who's 81, right? He mm -hmm. well, I think part of the quick learner thing is that he's been around for so long, right? That he's like, oh, okay, maybe I haven't seen this exact thing before, but I've seen other things that were enough like it. And this is what I did that worked, and this is what I did that didn't work. And when he first came into office, I talk about this all the time, he was like, What the fuck is this? I don't know how to work with this. His first state of the union, he's like, they're screaming at me? What the fuck? And now he's mm. like, okay, okay, okay. I see how this goes. And I'm going to, I'm not only going to understand how this works, I'm going to understand how to take advantage of it so that you own yourselves. And I play on all the things you've been saying about me that I'm just going to destroy right now about being old and senile and slow and, you know, inept and all of those things. And I'm just going to, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you have to flip the script and then talk about the next day how I was on drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, OK, so his performance was so good. A, they thought that he was on drugs. B, some folks were like, well, he clearly a uh, Mike Johnson, a uh, MAGA Mike Johnson. It yeah. was like, well, he clearly re rehearsed it 100 times. <laughs> so hold on a second. Right. If he's so, you know, addled and, you know, so uh, such a befuddled, fragile guy, I don't care if he rehearsed it a thousand times. First of all, he couldn't rehearse it a hundred times if he is so infirmed right. if he is so you, you know if it's such a a wreck he couldn't get through five rehearsals okay that man had his thing down packed mm -hmm. yeah so that, that's the thing though they that's this um that's this sort of walk sort of walking hypocrisy that they exist with is that he's somehow both infirm and senile and so devious and scheming and calculating that he's able to manipulate whole whole governments and whole, like, <laughs> whole, whole departments of the government whole you know, four different jurisdictions he's so adept at 4d chess he manufactured <laughs> the rise of the world's most successful pop star that's right that's right he's, but he's, he's not only He's not only Sleepy Joe, but he's also Kaiser Sose. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Right. Perfect. He is Kaiser Sose. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he's the one who left the cap off your milk in the refrigerator. <laughs> because not me is That's Joe right. Biden. He's also yeah. not me. Yeah. I mean, I thought, again, I just thought he really met the moment. And there were tons of viral moments. He hit every subject, everything. He hit. He started with Ukraine, which I think is so important and sends a signal to the world, which right yep. now is like, uh, are you guys going to have like a functioning democracy in a couple of months? And right. he was like, Ukraine is top of mind, but not just Ukraine. Obviously, it was reproductive freedom. Taiwan, was, yeah. Right. It was, and, and I just think that that was what we needed in the moment. I wish that there were one of those like every three months. You know, so that we could have another. But he does have, you know, these viral moments with the speeches when he gets into that sweet spot. And I think mm -hmm. that sweet spot is talking about the best in America, the promise yes. of America, and not giving up on democracy. For me, that's like when he hits like. <laughs> Hold on. So, you you know, when he clicks into that mode, it's when he says, like, when he when he says, this is the United States of America. Yes. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is that part. Guys. This is that part. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in our capacity. Right? <laughs> nothing that isn't in our capacity. If Come we, on. Yeah. How can you not love that? He's basically, he's saying, I am a cheerleader for this awesome country where mm -hmm. anything is possible. How can you not love that, as, especially when juxtaposed against Mr. Oh, I hope uh, I hope this country has a, a financial crash in the next 12 months. Uh, but, uh, 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 America's mm -hmm. stupid. Oh, mm -hmm. Russia's so great. <laughs> oh, I love Vladimir Putin mm -hmm. and Viktor Orban, the, the leader of Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, God, by the way, they you know say why? You know why he got why he confused uh, Viktor Orban with the leader of Turkey? Because I, I bet you he was hungry and then he thought about Turkey. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I would Did love you say he Turkey was hungry? Sub. <laughs> I'm gonna go have a turkey sub with that guy Vic there. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably you know, oh god, the thought of him eating is grosses me out. But yeah, I mean, the, yeah. The, the, then the thing was today or yesterday. Today he responded to the video that they played at the House Committee hearing yesterday, which we're going to talk about the hearing. He said it was AI. Come he on, said that those, man. Yeah, those, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah those gaffes. Those gaffes were AI. 
all of his <laughs> like all of his rally attendees i'm sure remembers those moments when he said those things what was it uh in saudi arabia arabia ruby do what like what dude that's my favorite one by the way is it that one? <laughs> that one? my favorite is when he just goes Duh. is that the one you're talking about where you just can't is that the one where he just can't even get a full sound and it's just it just sounds like he's short circuits is that the same one no 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 when okay. he said well or, or he goes uh, re -de -de -uh. <laughs> that's the one that, i have okay yeah. that is the one <laughs> we're just like it's like so he just ran out of gas like yeah. or somebody pulled the plug and it just hmm. really you really those are AI. But there's so there's so many. I I wish I could do one of those. In fact, I feel like I do want to do one of those. Uh, um, uh, now available from KTEL, Trump's greatest 100 flubs. Uh, <laughs> it, it includes this one. Uh, it's an anonymous, anonymous. <laughs> Yosemite. And let's not forget this one. Uh thank you very much, Tim Apple. And then there's also um and thank you very much. God bless the United States. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, did his teeth just fall out? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. And then like then you've got the whole like greatest hits of how many times he's intentionally said Obama like when he beat Obama, but that right. was intentional, right? Because <coughs> he's he's so cognitively there. He's yeah. got such a good brain. Everyone tells him that. All the best people they come up to him with tears in their eyes and they say, "You have the best brain, sir." <laughs> how do you do it, sir? Yeah, uh, he's he's so so all of his gaffes are AI, and like everything else, we're just supposed to be like, oh yeah. He didn't say that, right? Like, no, we didn't just hear that or see that with our own eyes and ears. You know, it's a it's a big problem, though. Like, uh, I, I was watching some show last night or, or the other night when they were talking about how we're like in this post-truth mm -hmm. reality where, where we can't even agree on very, <laughs> very basic truths and facts. You know, like, we, dude, we all saw you say those things. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, and some people who don't mind being tortured watched you live say those things, you know? Right. Um, and you want to suddenly like change reality to where, no, I didn't really say that. Somebody made an AI of me saying that live. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 it's, it, but it is. I mean, like, it's the serious side of it, to your point, is is that it's the authoritarian's playbook, right? So, like, mm, Orwell wrote about this. You know what I mean? There's truth and there's untruth. And if you clung to the truth, you know, you, you basically were not – I forget the rest of the, the quote, but, like, you were not mad. They're insane because that's what we've seen – since really 2015 has been this sort of, sort of steady degradation of this idea of fundamental truth of facts that we can all agree that you know your shirt is maybe pink but actually I, can't, I don't know if we can't agree because i can't tell it's salmon salmon <laughs> <laughs> not okay. salmon but salmon. salmon we can all agree that i'm wearing mrs roper's robe but like but this but that's part of the playbook because this as much as they get can do that what they can do and and you know the other side of that is that they control the truth right so it's obviously very intentional and and with that i want to pivot a little bit to katie Britt because what katie Britt is now doing is is the same thing she got caught in a lie and if you don't know she if you didn't see it which i don't know how anybody at this point hasn't seen her rebuttal or at least a clip of it or somebody's mocking of it because <laughs> let's be honest myself included there's a lot she told the story about going down to the border and meeting with someone she met with one-on-one -on -one in the story and the person tells her about well, the woman tells her about how she was sex trafficked and mm -hmm. that she, and she names the cartels and she very much makes it um clear that she's talking about someone recently and during the Biden administration she doesn't explicitly say those words but she implies it to a point where she says and that it happened in Mexico, by the way. Um, she didn't imply. She implied it happened here because she said um, we wouldn't accept this in a third world country, let alone here in America. But it didn't happen here in America and it didn't happen under Biden. It happened under what? George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it was. Yeah. Between and, 2004 and 2008. Right. And so when when this was discovered that she had lied, um, she was confronted with this lie and then just lied more. And now she's fundraising 
on the fact that she's being persecuted by mm -hmm. us for the story she told. But she's not talking about that. She's just saying she's being persecuted because she was brave enough to go and rebut the president's uh, State of the Union. And that's the that's this other that's like sort of following this thread through of this dismantlement of the truth that yeah. what she did. She took the truth. She lied. We know mm -hmm. she lied. And then she took that lie. Spectacularly. She's right. like, oof. Um, I'm Katie. I hear you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> but like, so yeah, she 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 lied and she got confronted with the lie. There's no disputing the lie. She never disputes the lie. She never disputes mm -hmm. it. Then the victim comes out and says, You took advantage of me. You lied. She yeah. never responds to that. And now she's like Trump, like everybody else. She's flipped the script entirely where she is the victim. And we're no longer talking about the truth. And that's that's because uh the the right wing is is all about the victim culture mm -hmm. the, the culture of victimhood you know it's those evil democratic uh communist socialist liberals yep. uh they're pedophile demon uh child blood drinking you know and, and they're all victims of us of persecution by us you know how dare they uh hold donald trump responsible for all of his you know crimes that he that weren't illegal but even if they were illegal he had no choice <laughs> he did it for <laughs> us he did it for you did you know that he raw dog raw dog to porn star for you bdd he did it for you you know they used to be all about personal responsibility that was their staple personal responsibility but they don't want this guy to be personally held personally responsible for anything and you know here's another thing um personal responsibility uh and and changing the facts live uh did you see that thing with nancy mace and i was gonna George Stephanopoulos? i was gonna ask you about that next yep goodness gracious that's the, the it was the most one of the most bizarre things in a whole you know catalog of of bizarre things where she accused him mm -hmm. of rape shaming her mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, you know, my English is pretty good. <laughs> I swear did not hear him say anything, anything even coming close to rape shaming her. And then she proceeded to rape shame E. Jean Carroll. Correct. Like within the same, ne the very next sentence or paragraph out of her mouth, she mm -hmm. was rape shaming her. Like, come on. And that's the perfect thing to mention when, like, in the context of the conversation we were having just ahead of it, because what she did is exactly what we're talking about. She's now the victim, right? She's, mm -hmm. and she became the victim because she instantly, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's like a, like a lizard knowing, I don't know, this molts their, I don't know what lizards do. I don't know how they shed that exos, what a skin or whatever they call it. But like, that's kind of how <laughs> it felt like she just ripped off like this exo layer and she was like, able to deflect instantly, like, oh, did he ask me something that I should be accountable for? And he do it explain how dare you how <laughs> dare you did you not know that i too am a victim of rape and how dare you? and i'm as someone who is a survivor of rape and was late very late decades late to ever exposing that truth because i too was like ashamed and embarrassed for reasons that are not legitimate in the sp spectrum of like being legitimate things but they were legitimate to me so i'll mm -hmm. never say that i questioned someone for not telling anybody for, for a long time, but watching that and listening to that and realizing she never answers the question. The question mm -hmm. is, how can you support someone who is, and, and George Stephanopoulos wasn't as careful as he could have been because he's an adjudicated rapist. Adjudicated. For right. Rape, yeah. And he did say rapist, right? But I believe he did anyway. And maybe we're on a technicality because he was actually found liable of sexual abuse. And people say that the judge said, you know, yes, this can qualify as him being a rapist. But these are all the little nuances that we really don't have to explain. We're still talking about him mm -hmm. being someone who entered someone else's private. Forci forcibly. Right. Forcibly. That's right. rape. Right. We're crying and so out it's like, loud. It's like, really, are we going to die on this hill of what we're calling it? Or are we just going to talk? <laughs> like, so but anyway, it's ridiculous. But that's what so that's what she did. She's like, I'm never going to answer his question because then I'll be accountable for trying to explain this thing that's in it. And you can't. It's inexplicable. You can't square being a rape survivor and supporting a rapist for being 
the president of the United States. And she never has tried. She's mm -hmm. attacked E. Jean and yeah. she's attacked George Stephanopoulos. And I'll bet she's going to be raising money off of this too soon. Oh, was, I'm pretty sure she is already. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the truth, the truth of what we all saw and heard was not George Stephanopoulos doing anything of the sort. It was a, a legitimate question that you should ask that if, if a female reporter had asked her, she wouldn't have said that. She wouldn't have said those words. I don't know what she would have done, but she wouldn't she have said have. those words. I she don't know. Have. I was actually very uh, surprised, pleasantly surprised with how well George Stephanopoulos kind of stuck to his guns and pushed mm -hmm. back on her repeatedly. He's mm -hmm. actually getting getting pretty good at that sort yeah. of thing. There's very few um like he was like a dog with a bone. <laughs> he wasn't yeah. letting go. Right. And then he, eventually he just was like, all right, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you got to get the hell off of my show. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, there's only so much juice in those lemons. Like you can't squeeze. She's by then it's like, I can't, I'm, she's never going to tell the truth. And he's, he's going to still persist because that's what so few of them do, like you said. Yeah. Um, but what, the, what they did in response when they were attacking George is what, of course they did. It's what about, he worked for Bill Clinton and Bill Clinton is, you know, Paula Jones. And it's like, this has nothing to do with right. Nancy Mace's question. That's mm -hmm. the question that everyone is trying to deflect from and no one is willing to answer. I don't give a shit right now about right. what George Stephanopoulos did for Bill Clinton. Maybe it was disgusting. OK, fine. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about, which is the presidency of the United States in 2024 and how a rape survivor can support a rapist. That's what we're talking about. And that's why they don't want to answer the question. Because what about is right. there is their next best defense? Well, right. What about that? Yeah. Right. And 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 they're doing that also, sadly and tragically, with Lake and Riley, who, by the way, Donald Trump misspelled her name on the autographed photo he posed with smiling. Oh, yeah. Grinning yeah. because it's such a happy occasion. Right. Yeah. And Biden misspoke. And that was one of the things in the State of the Union. We're not going to harp on it. He has apologized. He misspoke. He said illegals. That wasn't the word that he should have used, but he also mis said her name and he was destroyed for that. Can I destroyed. tell you, I, I saw Lincoln Riley trending and I was like, you guys are so freaking petty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> look, yeah. look, um, I can count on one finger <laughs> the number of times I have heard the name Lakin. Me too. First name, Lakin. Right. Riley, I've heard. Yeah. Lakin, not. Right. Right. So you could be forget. You know how many people have mispronounced my name in my lifetime? Right. I'd be a millionaire if I had a nickel for every time somebody pronounced mispr mispronounced my name. Right. Lakin falls into that category. Only yeah. five letters, two right. syllables, but hard to pronounce. OK, so. Yeah. And I rewatched that moment where it's it, he could have said Lincoln. It could have said Lakin, you know, depending on how is, you know how you were listening to him, whatever it, that was insignificant. The The fact of the matter is he did make the effort to say her name. She Bingo. was wearing, uh, what was her name? Marjorie Taylor Greene yeah. was wearing a t-shirt with her performative outrage saying, say her name. So he said her name. Oh, he mispronounced it all out there. <laughs> what? Exactly. what insane exactly. hell is this? Exactly. It's like, like we want a border bill. We want we want action on the border. You need to do something about the border. Okay. Well, here we have this bipartisan border bill. Your people, including Katie Britt, helped us craft. Why don't we do it with this one? It's the most we've ever ever done as Democrats on the border, and a lot of Democrats hate us for it. Um, not that <laughs> way, damn it. <laughs> like, what the. Like it's like those people in your life that you know these people where they're like, oh, well, it's me. This is my problem. I know I'm miserable. And then you're like, well, what if you just like, you know, stop doing that with your arm? And they're like, how you don't understand. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't want a solution right now. I just want to be upset that my elbow hurts. And you're like, but I I'm in the so I like want to help you. No, I just want you to listen. It's like Republicans yeah. are those people. <laughs> yeah, don't really want the solution. Yeah. They just want to whine all fucking day. And here's what here, the main thing that is bugging me about this um, border crisis. I believe it's I believe it's uh, it's real. I think it's a real issue. I would like to know, frankly, why is it that all of a sudden, like there's like a whole caravan? Like who is coordinating these mm. caravans? It's it's not like all of a sudden 
like thousands of people all at the same time decided to hit the road and travel <laughs> in one big long, you know, parade. And it's what I understand is that the the path here, the 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 journey here is arduous. It's yeah. not something that's fun. You right. know, it's not easy. It's it's littered with with danger. Mm -hmm. uh, and people go through a lot to get here. You know, some people are seeking asylum because they're coming. You know, you know how hard it is to move. I do. I <laughs> hate moving. I, I moving hate is like my least favorite thing. Yeah, me too. To move from one country to another and like to be having to walk all that. Hell no. So there, people are leaving some very dangerous, uh, unsafe situations because. You know, they want better for themselves and for their families. And apparently it's still not illegal to seek asylum here. Mm -hmm. But people are trying to the Republicans are trying to villainize these folks who are coming here. Most of the majority, the vast majority of immigrants who come here are hardworking. Mm -hmm. They do pay taxes. There's a whole lot of like misinformation about that. They actually do pay taxes. And the most important one is that they are not uh, responsible for a spike in crime. Thank They're you. not, you know, criminals as Donald Trump uh, likes to uh, label them. No. Oh, in fact, a, a lot of them are just like want to keep a low profile. I can't, I went through all this shit to get here. Do you think I want to, uh, uh, be jeopardized uh, my my status by getting kicked out for some stupid shit like shoplifting. No, they're trying to just keep their heads down and work, provide for their family and, you know, do their thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, a, a stat came out recently that said that cities that accepted, uh, you know, large numbers of migrants not only in, uh, did not experience a spike in crime, Crime decreased. Mm. <laughs> so, well, I don't know how that works, <laughs> but but that's what happened. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and that's part of this whole puzzle, right? Is this the victim thing? Is that one of the groups that they love to vilify all the time are immigrants because immigrants are they, them, those people who are coming for your fill in the blank, right? And they can fear monger successfully because it's, they can tap into that, whatever that thing is for each person independently. You know, it's, 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 it's very, very powerful. We've seen it throughout history. It's like, they're coming for your America. They're coming. Did you hear, did you hear the nonsense he said about the, uh, all the languages. Oh my God, yeah. like, dude, come on! What What do you mean? You, uh, you, there, nobody can understand these languages. Somebody can understand them, you moron. There are languages nobody even speaks. That's what he said, BDD. <laughs> and so I said, "Are the languages in the room with you now?" It's like, <laughs> how How does that work? It's like a language no one speaks. Pretty sure that's silence. But okay. <laughs> Yeah, but that's all part of it. And, in, and again, the language where he's echoing Hitler and you know, the whole poisoning the blood stuff, it's all very, very intentional. Katie Britt, going back to her, that whole story was all about that. That story that she lied about was all designed to make the Mon Pa Magus at home like, oh, God, the cartels are here and they're, you know, they're going to move over and over and over and over. Like it was all about fear mongering and them being victims of those people. And it's like also hugely elemental to everything that they offer because they don't offer anything but that. They know that because they don't have platforms, don't have policy, they don't have any accomplishments at all. They got to find something and they lost abortion because now the dog done caught the car. So mm -hmm. uh, what do they have left? It's the border, which they didn't want to do anything about. So they can't really use that. So it's fear. That's all that's left. Yeah. Crime is one thing is is one area that there's it's it's always there's always going to be crime yeah. as, as long as people um, need to support their families as long. And I'm not justifying crime. I'm just saying that there are reasons people do crimes yeah. and it's that they, they have inadequate education and inadequate number of opportunities to, you know, get uh, legitimately support their family. So they turn to a life of crime and that's that's what happens. Mm -hmm. That's neither here nor there. There's always going to be crime, right? Mm -hmm. But where you choose to point the camera will will tell us 
what kind of person you are. So like they at at any given time, they choose to point the camera at migrant people, for instance, uh, you know, or when it suits them and there's a mass shooting that happens and there happens to be a person who's trans who had something to do with it all of a sudden oh this is big trans people are come on they, they represent 0.001 percent of the population and probably even a smaller percentage of the people responsible for the majority of mass shooting but you want to try to paint a narrative like oh my god they are the major threat that we're facing and it's the same thing with um immigrant people you no know, migrant what is it what is the right word is it immigrant is it migrant I mean, I know. often use migrant. Or there's two different undocumented. There's two, there's two different things, though, right? Migrant. Yeah, people I believe so. Are specifically here for work versus immigrant people who are here to move. To, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds right. I mean, I often say I'm the daughter of an immigrant because my dad came here to live here. So yeah, probably is right. The language is still for me a learning curve because I, I always want to be sensitive to, you know, which words I'm supposed to be using to be considerate of, you know, whatever, you know, people feel personally like is offensive to them. So I think, yeah, I think migrant in this case or immigrant, but yeah, back to your point about the crime though. That, that's where, that's where that whole L Lakin Riley uh, controversy is, is rooted. It's rooted in, we want to focus. We know that, you know, the majority of crime is being committed by, I don't know, uh, it's it's like 60 percent um, white perpetrators. Yep. And then there's, you know, another 25 percent black perpetrators, another 15 percent Latino, you know, whatever that the hell that breakdown is. And right. then you want to get into the the immigrant population It's probably like, you know, four percent or or less. Mm hmm. Right. But but they blow it up to make it look like there are Lake and Riley's being murdered everywhere by migrants who were released, you know, um, and they make it look like it's part of this whole thing, this this big conspiracy to take in um, migrant people and then kill us, <laughs> then take our places yeah. and then take our votes and our jobs. Right. Meanwhile. And drink our Bud Lights. Right. Meanwhile, in the 2023, there was an average of over 100, well over 100 incidences of gun violence in this country a day, every day, every single mm. day. Um, some percentage of third graders has been exposed to gun violence that was shocking. It was like over 80 percent. Um, it's a persistent issue. We see um, mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. And every time it's not convenient for their narrative, it's too soon to talk about politics, mm -hmm. right? Thoughts and mm -hmm. prayers. Ted Cruz has never said the names of the Uvalde victims. Really? He's never said their names, but he demands that we say no offense to Lake and Riley and her family because it is tragic and every loss of life is tragic and it is sad. But to think that he would demand that we say one individual's name when mm -hmm. he won't say those souls that were killed and murdered in his state by a weapon he endorses it's just it's just the epitome of hypocrisy it makes your stomach yeah. like turn yeah that's that's bizarre i didn't even know that that um i didn't even know he was he was making that demand he's that guy oh is, yeah that... and and but that's so many of them made the same demand who have never marjorie taylor green for instance she's mm -hmm. never said the names of these shooting victims because she's always said i don't want to talk about it's too soon to talk about politics why are they always politicizing it and then she'll say well, they don't want to talk about it when the shooter's trans because it's happened like like you said twice meanwhile mm -hmm. you know we have buffalo we have el paso we have dayton we have um, yeah, Dayton, not Toledo, Dayton, because Trump mixed them up. I mean, we have the Pulse nightclub. They don't want to talk. They don't want to say their names. I mean, how how many shootings have we had? Parkland, Sandy Hook. They don't want to say their names. But one tragic incident happens with one person and, and one undocumented person in this country. Mm. And and that's all they want to talk about. And it's it's both exploitative, exploitative, exploitative. I think that's Ex exploitative, exploitative yeah. of Lake and Riley's 
death of her life. She didn't mm-hmm. get. A, she didn't choose this. I don't know that she would want this. We don't know anything about her. But they're right. exploiting her while also at the same time completely, and her family's pain too. Right, and completely ignoring all the other suffering that we can do something about right. because gun violence isn't like a tornado. It's not a natural disaster. But they refuse to do anything about it. I mean, the whole thing is just—it's disgusting on its face and sad and sad and tragic. If they were serious about border security, they would go ahead and pass that bill, number one. Mm-hmm. And number two, if they were serious about crime, they would help get assault weapons off the streets right. and stop with that nonsense. As you said, you know, with the, uh, oh, it's too soon to talk. It's not, it's it's too, it's late already. It's late in the game. It's time, it's long past time we started talking about this crap. Right. We're an extra, we're going well, extra innings. We're like, we're longer than the Astros Mets playoff game. Like, I mean, playoff. What? What? I just said the weirdest thing, but they don't call yeah, them playoffs. Play- what am I talking about? Yeah. Yeah. They do. <laughs> they do. Okay. My brain just had a moment because the dog's working. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was like 18 innings or something. But let's pivot for a second to some news today. Uh, TikTok, the House voted to ban TikTok in this country unless they cut ties with their chinese parent company which i don't know much about but what are your thoughts on that uh well i thought it was interesting that it was a bipartisan vote and like it wasn't close it was i think 300 and something to 60 something 65 maybe um and frankly he, here's how i um i feel about it i know several people who are tiktok uh, influencers, creators, like, you know, Tizzy Ent, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tizzy Ent. It's great, great mm-hmm. stuff. I love what he does. Yeah. He's a TikTok uh, creator. I think he's got like 5 million followers or something. He's got oh, amazing. Shit. It's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I do kind of understand the concern about national security. However, with that said, like, what are, you, what, are they thinking that our individual phones, your phone, my phone, and you know Joe Blow's phone are going to be used somehow as some kind of um, mobile remote control or something. Like I, I don't, frankly, I don't get it. I see like my kids occasionally uh, look at on uh, TikTok. They say it's like uh, it's a faster YouTube. Like yeah. it, this is my son said if. Uh, if you want something explained quickly, go to TikTok. If mm-hmm. you want something to take 15 or 20 minutes to explain, then you watch YouTube. <laughs> I'm right. still I'm still YouTube speed, right? <laughs> um but I'm a little suspicious about the uh the timing and yeah. I'm suspicious about the motivation behind it. Like who benefits who benefits hugely or bigly? Yeah. <laughs> from from TikTok being taken out of the equation. Who who's the next biggest competitors? It would be Google, Google mm-hmm. and YouTube and um Meta or Facebook, whatever. Right. right? And Elon. Yeah. 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 And this there is this other component too, which is that there seems to be a fairly sustained attack on information and sources of information as it pertains in particular to political issues at the moment. Meta has announced that they'll be in a way suppressing not their word, but like taking out of the algorithm, you know, accounts that they that they see engaging in political um, content frequently. Have you heard that yet? I don't. Yeah, that's something I I thought that I I assumed that they had already been uh, doing that. Like uh, one of my buddies uh, had a big um youtube page actually uh <clears throat> the really american uh oh. youtube page was big and there was we they had started putting less time and effort into it because they understood that youtube was kind of you know YouTube clamping too? down i'm um, not excuse me not youtube uh, facebook oh. was kind of clamping down on the algorithm for political stuff i haven't experienced it firsthand yet I'm not as active on Meta as other platforms. I I mean, I'm on threads and Facebook. I don't post primarily there. I Mm -hmm. um, post primarily still on X and actually TikTok now. Um, But uh, I haven't experienced any of that in terms of my own feed or my own um, reach. But you can also check, by the way, you can go into your account settings and see like if your content is is still being 
fed into the algorithm or not, it'll tell you if it's been flagged. I forget what how to do it, but there is a way you can just Google it. On um, TikTok? Uh, no, on the meta platforms. So Instagram oh, okay. and threads, you can – maybe Facebook, actually. I don't know. I've only checked it on threads, and so far – it says I'm fine, but I don't know what that means. But yeah, the, the, so back to it, there is this sort of sustained attack on information and sources of information in an incredibly important year mm-hmm. when we need all the access to information. And the voices who are out there that are trusted already, because people don't get their news as much from trusted news sources like you know CNN and ABC and newspapers, they get it more from people like me and you who really take our time to be careful about what we're saying, but not everybody does, but they're yeah. limiting people's access to those accounts. So it's like, there's just this void of information. How does this, I want to know, how does uh, this TikTok ban, and I, I'm putting air quotes on on the word ban because some people have told me that it's actually technically not a ban. Yeah, that's They what are saying. asking, um, I believe the company's name is ByteDance. Yeah, that sounds right. right? Mm-hmm. They're asking ByteDance, <clears throat> excuse me, to divest. Yeah. Um, and if TikTok is then uh, acquired by an American company, then it can remain in operation. I think that's that- that's the deal. But I'm just curious, how does this, how is this going to affect you as a, you know, as a TikTok creator? I mean, I'm very new to really kind of trying to cultivate a TikTok presence because I'm I'm old and sort of late to the whole video game. But um, it's, it's, I've reached a totally different audience over there, which I can't really reach on the more traditional platforms or the older platforms like Facebook and Twitter or X or whatever. I'll never call it that. Um, but I, I just, I reach younger people um, because younger people are over on TikTok and mm. And I won't be able to do that as much anymore. And I'll tell you one other thing that I think, again, back to the point before, that I think is really important. I, I know you are just like this. I take my time and make sure what I'm saying, despite what that defiant L's guy will tell you, what I'm saying <laughs> is accurate. And he, boy, does he love us, by the way. We must make that guy a lot of money. Well, you Ooh. know his name is Defiant L's, or their name is, is Defiant L's. You know where they got the Defiant from. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm that so, gift when my head explodes right now. So that account, Defiant L's, uh, when it first started, was devoted exclusively to attacking me and me alone. And it, they idea. they had like a whole team of people, you know, tr- you know, scrolling through all of my tweets to the beginning of time to find any time that i said one thing and then later on i said something that appears mm-hmm. that's to contradict appears right to contradict every once in a while they will legit get me in a you know oh i said this but really and then later i said that but uh, most of the time they're really stretching stretching oh, that they're weak it's weak sauce but yeah, yeah so that's long story short that's where the defiant i had no came from idea i had no idea but that makes so much sense i just thought they were being defiant but yeah they love they love us we must get them i think we get them the most traction of that, most engagement of any of their memes um yeah and they're hysterical to me elon actually laughed at one once before he he shut my account down for two weeks um for no reason but that was fun so um but back to this idea of being careful and vetting your information and not spreading disinformation or not being sloppy about what you're mm-hmm. putting out there. You and I are deliberate about that. It's important. Yeah. You're probably going to put my name on it. I want it to be right. I want it to be fact checkable. I don't want a community notes lapped on it because God knows <laughs> they try all yeah. the time. So I'm very careful to make sure that I don't give them any room. And I try to dangle it just enough where they're like, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. And they can't because mm-hmm. I have receipts. So. That's the problem, though, is that a lot of creators in different spaces, they just don't really care. And so or they're intentionally spreading disinformation. And that's where it gets scary, because if accounts like yours and mine can't reach people and then they get people who are not being careful or intentionally being deceiving, that's really scary. Yeah. Yeah. And right nowadays, disinformation sells. Uh, They say the uh, that a lie goes around the world several times before the truth even gets out of bed and puts its socks on or something like that. His pants. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. It's um, true. But I am kind of, I, I am a little bit leery about this TikTok 
whatever you want to call it for, for lack of a, a more accurate term, let's just call it stick with calling it a ban. I'm, yeah. I'm leery of it because I, I wonder how far behind is a so-called ban on other platforms on Twitter and, you know, mm-hmm. places that, that we frankly, you know, when I'm sometimes when I'm looking for accurate up to the minute news, I go to Twitter before yep. I go to, and I'm not calling it X, just so you know, I'm not calling it X. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> I don't. I've never, ever really called it that. Much, I, can't. I, I go to Twitter to, to check for the like up to the minute mm-hmm. news because mm-hmm. Twitter is often maybe about 15 to 30 minutes ahead of msnbc and cnn yeah 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 i agree with you and i think it's a slippery slope and i think it's interesting that the same people who are screaming about how you can't take their guns because it's in the constitution are like oh free speech yeah totally you got that like Mm -hmm. i'm sorry but i don't remember seeing ar-15 in the constitution but i feel like i saw freedom of speech in there somewhere (laughs) yeah there's conditions on it just like there's conditions on anything but but the the fact that they will happily ban a, a platform that spreads information that may not always be useful to them, but an AR-15 is their God-given right. Yeah. It's in the Bible. Oh, I often wonder, speaking of the AR-15, like how many children, dead children, will it take for for folks to wake up? Like what what size does the massacre need to be because it you know we've already seen sandy hook was horrendous and uvaldi horrendous and and it's a a really sad long list parkland all these uh children just murdered sacrificed at the altar of the nra in you know in the name of preserving access to a weapon of war for people who really don't need that shit. They right. really, really don't. You know, so you know, I, I imagine I imagine some minds are being changed at every uh every mass shooting. One at least one parent who's previously like gung ho about, you know, AR 15s. Have you changed your mind now that your your little boy or your little girl is gone? Has that changed your mind? Right. I want to know. I, I really would like to know. There's somebody should do a study on that. It's interesting that you say that because I, I honestly, I've been shocked in the past. I mean, I've been shocked so many times. Sandy Hook shocked me, but Uvalde shocked me that nothing really changes. Although we did get some gun legislation after Uvalde. Not enough. That's a start. Yeah. But after having spoken with now several gun gun survivors, gun violence survivors, Fred Gutenberg and – um. Uh, I can't think of it now. Also, my brain is, but if, uh, Ashby David Beasley. Hogg? I haven't spoken with David Hogg, but I spoke with Ash, Ashby Beasley, who is a survivor of the shooting in Illinois at the Fourth of July parade. Mm. Um, and having spoken with them now, and realizing that they all say, "Oh, Sam Schwartz, who lost his cousin in Parkland," um, they all say this one thing that has resonated with me so much, and that is like I used to think that that was something that happened to other people. You know what I mean? That was this, oh, how tragic and sad, but it didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. And what they've realized is that, like, we're all just them waiting for it to happen to us, right? Mm. So, like, that's what's happening now is that the more that this goes on and the less that's done about it, the the more our chances increase of being people who say, I never thought this was going to impact me directly. You know what I mean? I didn't maybe do enough because I thought that's not in my hometown. And I just want to say on top of that, one thing I saw very recently that changed something in many minds of my peers here in my town who never talk about politics, know what I do for a living. They don't want to talk to me about politics. We just know it's an unwritten rule. You don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. The day of the Kansas City um, Super Bowl celebration shooting. Oh, yeah. All my friends are, are sports moms. Our boys play together. Like this is what we do. We go to sports with our sons. We watch our sons play sports. We we go to parades like that. Would if that if that was our team, we would have been there. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, my phone is blowing up. We have to do something. We have to get involved. Enough is enough. We have to stop this. And why? And I don't fault them for this, but why? Because they could finally see themselves 
in this scenario where they're mm. at this celebratory event with their son, the most joyous, happiest moment and to the unspeakable, unthinkable, most horrific tragedy unfolded and they cannot imagine having to deal with that. And so finally it was like, no more. And that's what it takes. It takes making people so, take themselves out of this abstract of it's not going to happen to me to it. It will if you don't do something, not that I'm willing that or wishing that. But if we don't do anything, it's only a matter of time because yeah. statistically they're increasing so much. Statistically, it's going to happen. It's going to affect you directly. And they are clinging to to these uh, weapons of war for the hypothetical scenario in mm -hmm. which the government becomes tyrannical right. and then they have, you know, they're going to pull out my AR-15 and go fight me some U.S. Army. I'm going to take him out. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they've been talking about this for years and years and years. And, you know, part of my, my um, a, a part of my brain acknowledges that that is, that is, a distant remote possibility that scenario could happen but god forbid it does you are you gonna outlast their, their tanks and you're gonna outlast those you know fighter jets and all that shit and the bombs with your ar-15 is that what's <laughs> gonna happen jethro huh have you god seen the damn. one comedian who does this <laughs> that where he's like okay okay so you're telling me <laughs> these guys are going to like they're going to get all their air 15s you get 100 of them 200 of them they're all like all right we're ready we're going to war <laughs> okay all right let's just run the scenario so you got like 200 guys over here armed to the teeth and tactical gear and air 15s and you got two guys in a bunker <laughs> that's got a drone <laughs> and the guy with the drone is like <laughs> so they're all like they're all gathered together over there like all those those guys the air 15s are just like in one spot and he's like that's right and he's like <laughs> he's like okay you, you sure i can do this you sure this is there and he's like yeah and he goes okay <laughs> Button. i saw that one too i don't remember who it was it said so, but it's like he does it like a play-by-play he's like like he's the announcer and he's like okay what are they gonna do and he's like we got 300 guys they are 15s we got two guys with a drone <laughs> it's, like, it's over when he presses it like, for real yeah. you're gonna go yeah. to war with this it's it's irrational it's, yeah. it's an irrational oh here's the other thing um i have this whole thing in in my brain it's kind of it's a little bit crazy but uh, I sometimes worry about the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> okay. I seriously, I mean, it's going to sound irrational. It is irrational. It's an uh -huh. irrational. But the back of my brain, uh, so I'm thinking I have to learn how to ride a motorcycle because <laughs> because every time you see a, a zombie TV show or movie, you always see the highway. You see like hundreds of cars. <laughs> Right, backed up. So I'm not gonna be a fool and be stuck on the highway in a car, right? On a motorcycle to get to the boat. So I also need a boat, right? <laughs> need a boat, but yeah. then I'm also gonna need some weapons, a, a weapons cache. And I don't, I've never actually even fired a gun yet, so I have to learn how to do that too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's distasteful. But with that said, I don't. I'm not trying to take away people's guns you know shotguns you know 12 gauge i understand people live on farms right in the middle of nowhere and you, you yeah you want to be able to defend yourself against people who would invade your home you know absolutely do you need some do you need a weapon that fires a hundred rounds per minute or more do you, mm -hmm. do, do you absolutely need that to, to go hunting or you know for self-defense Honestly, do you? Right. Really? Right. It liquefy whatever you're, you know, if you're hunting with it, it liquefy whatever you're hunting. Yeah. I mean, those things are straight up meant for war. They were created for war, right? They were created to cut through the the, the bush in Vietnam is what I believe I've heard, but I'm sure all oh, the- Oh, really? I didn't know that. I'm sure all the 2A nuts out there who've gotten to this point in the podcast, which is probably likely because they love to play like rage, rage, love me. Oh, I got a trivia question for you. Okay. Do you know what a you know what AR stands for? It's not assault rifle. I can tell you that much. It's not. No. Is it 
Armalite something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know how many times I've been schooled on that? So it's I not know. assault rifle? What? My whole lip life, I believe this lie about an AR being assault rifle? I should pack it in and never talk again. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh -huh. yeah. It's like, oh my God. Uh, I totally understand. And now I really think that everyone should have one. Of course, because it's Armalite. <laughs> and by the way, do you even know what an assault rifle is? It's like, I don't give a fuck yeah. right now. Yeah. If it can mow down an entire class of third graders, I don't want people. To have... If it's so scary that 9,000 guys in up to their teeth in tactical gear with weapons that are like would scare the shit out of me or like I can't mm -hmm. I can't I just I'm sorry like I could do anything else you need mm -hmm. for me right now but like totally can't go in there I know that they're dying but I'm like you're just not good with that if that yeah. weapon's so scary that that's happening we don't need anybody to have it not no mm -hmm. one nobody needs to have it so it's like that's it you're right I just don't think there's any reasonable argument and they never make the argument all they ever say is come and take it it's mine. The Constitution says I can have it. And it's like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't really because it says, you know, well regulated. And that means regulations, which means that might be one that you don't get. But they don't like that part. And I, I'm guessing the average um, the average person who uh, is who opposes the uh, who opposes gun reform thinks to themselves that law of averages is working in their favor and that, as you said earlier, it will never happen to me. Yeah. And that's why, that's why they selfishly cling to that. No, no, never, never. Where really just, you know, some, some common sense, some common sense legislation. Look, the common sense gun regulations are not going to eliminate every single mass shooting but if you could eliminate one or two of them right wouldn't you right. if you could save 20 30 40 50 lives right wouldn't you with just the law that says you know no more uh gun show loophole mm -hmm. you know how about a red flag laws uh mandatory now you know if if you exhibit a certain kind of behavior then you're not permitted you know, to own a gun. Let's, you know, these are some common sense things. Let's do that. The, the majority of gun owners, majority of people who own guns are like, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. It's only yeah. the NRA that opposes these things. And then hence their, their lackeys, their puppets in Congress uh, go along with it too. Yeah. Not to mention that we had an assault weapons ban and when it was in effect, nobody came for, the rest of their guns. Nobody was knocking on their door and being like, can I have that revolver? I'm sorry. I know we said we wouldn't come for them, but I lied. Like, no, that's not happening. Didn't happen. Wouldn't happen again. Because mm -hmm. there are lots of people who, who who are proponents of common sense gun legislation who are gun owners. Like that's you right. said, safe storage is one huge one that they're like, what? You mean we have to put this thing in a safe? What? No, that's bullshit. And gun owners who who get it are like, no, that's that's pretty that's pretty normal. Like, let's let's totally do that. But like, but everyone else is like, don't tread on me. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. And yeah. then they put on their lapel pins with the AR-15 and throw away pictures of of victims from Uvalde, which Lauren Boebert. Disgusting. Bober, yeah. Um. Well, with that, um, because she is disgusting and blech. But she said she's not going to run for Ken Buck's seat. Ken Buck's like, I'm getting out of here, but I'm burning the whole place down first. That's fun. It's beautiful. I love oh. it. I mean, they cut better ads <laughs> than we do half the time. Chip Roy is like a, a dem ad machine. We oh, get yeah. nothing done ever anywhere <laughs> in the history of time. Democrats just kick our butts all the time. It's like, kick name me butt. one thing. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I can go back home and tell my constituents I did for them. One. Thing. It's like, well, mm -hmm. actually, it's nothing. Um, yeah, love you, Chip Roy, but we, we don't want you on our side. But we'll take your <laughs> your ad. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Thank you for that. And we can and we can take his quotes in full context, and they but, still yeah. mean the same thing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they're still true. They're they're completely true because he can't go back to his constituents with one thing, one thing, right. except for maybe banning TikTok. <laughs> so we'll see. 
Congrats, guys. That's quite yeah. a record. Um, okay, with that, we're going to pivot to the um, totally random rapid fire question round. All right. The very serious I like it. portion, because yes. So we were talking about Katie Britt and her weird, whole weird thing. We didn't even mention that she was in her kitchen, which is a whole other thing, which is so demeaning and undermining, and her doing that to herself and allowing herself to be exploited in that way, in the service of someone who is a rapist, by the way, is all insanity that she was in her kitchen. But being that it didn't look like she uses her kitchen very much, I'm curious, her $10,000 fridge, what the weirdest, what is the weirdest thing in Katie Britt's fridge? A human head. <laughs> <laughs> I am now... Anchorman, I'm the Anchorman gif. It's like that escalating, that escalating. Oh my god! Okay, that would be strange. She has some explaining yeah. to do. No, she, she had some very strange um, vocal modulations that she was doing there. That just made me think she was a sociopath. Completely. Like it. It. It's really hard to parody that because. I tried because mm -hmm. she went to so many extremes. Like there was the funny baby thing that she was doing. And then there was the breathy, like, don't die. We're all going to die. It's like the demon. And then there was like the weird random smiling when talking about how America is going to hell. It's like, what is wrong with this person? So many bizarre choices she made. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had to look up funny baby. Cause I saw you in your, uh, your thing the the thing you wrote this week uh and you, you uh mentioned the fundy baby and i kept seeing fundy baby all over the place fundy means fundamentalist and right. i didn't know that if i had to guess myself i would have thought it was referring to like a hedge fund or something <laughs> hedge fund <laughs> that baby. would the voice would be a little different mm -hmm. probably but yeah my friend jess um Jess, my God, my brain is not working today. I'm going to think of her name. I can't think of it at the moment. But my friend Jess, she grew up in that world. And she was one of the first people to put it on my radar, the Fundy voice. She put it on my uh, radar when Mike Johnson's wife did that interview with Mike Johnson. And she talked like Minnie Mouse. And it was just so weird. Wow. And yeah, and I'm going to – Jess Piper. There it is. Jess Piper. Hello, Jess Piper from Missouri. You need to follow her if you're not following her. She's amazing. Oh, and I she, know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she came from that that fundamentalist world, so she knows the voice. It's the Duggar voice too. It's the same. And so she knows it, and it's all meant to project – Is that an affectation? Is, uh, are, they, is, are they like, you know, pretend – like are they changing their voices to sound like that? It, yes, but, but it's more – it's less um, – uh, like conscious it's it's almost like it's just it it's just a thing that is ingrained in them in their personalities that they know they need to do that they know mm. they need to put it on because that's what's expected because that's what society that's what their christian fundamentalist like, society has has shown them and taught them and because some people do legit sound like that in real like uh jennifer tilly and True. Um, uh melanie griffith True. Right? Yes, very true. That is true. But I think in those cases, those I don't know that the, they're not trying to put on a little bit of a, a sex symbol thing either. Like, I don't know that Melanie Griffith is like farting and she's like, I'm so sorry. I, farted. No, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm Jennifer Tilly. I don't know. I'm like, I'm just like I want a fucking beer. I don't know. She's like, Can I get a beer? I don't I don't know. Those are my Jennifer Tilly and my, um, yeah, Melanie Griffith voices. But I don't know that they're not putting something on as well. I just don't I don't know anybody in my life naturally talks that way but yeah, yeah i live in new yeah. jersey so it's possible <laughs> that we don't have them here um but yeah fundy fundy baby voice is definitely worth googling because it is fascinating and um yeah that's what she did sort of and then a lot of other crazy sociopathic things but number two who would last longer oh my gosh it was like i like it was willed by the universe because i love this question i asked it last week of john fugel saying his answer was Amazing. Who would last longer in a zombie apocalypse, Jim Jordan or James Comer? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I'm going to say Jim Jordan because I think James Comer is, you know, uh, is five cans short of a six pack. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jim I mean, Jim, Jim Jordan is is smaller. He's littler, uh, but I, he is intelligent. And it's one of the things like I, I have more anger 
and more resentment towards the people in Congress who you know that they're intelligent, but they choose to be evil anyway. Yeah. That's Katie. James Comer. You almost can't blame the guy. You feel like you you just feel like he's he's in Congress, despite how dumb he is. (laughs) He's really he's really, really just not getting it. He's like. Right. Jim. Yeah. But Jim Jordan did definitely choose evil. Like Matt Gates chose evil. Ted Cruz chose evil. Lindsey Graham is choosing evil. Yeah, yeah. They're not stupid people. March Green. She's stupid. She's genuinely <laughs> stupid. She's as yeah. stupid as she is evil. And, and she is really fucking evil. But she's also yeah. stupid. Um, When Joe laughed at her right to her face. I, that might be my favorite moment of all time when he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and she laughed. Did you catch it? She actually was like, OK, I, have, I just got laughed at. I kind of have to laugh at myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You look like a freaking NASCAR right now. You mean in the beginning when he was still making his way to the podium. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that turned into a pretty like viral uh a meme. Yeah. 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 Him- <laughs> I mean he oh, he owned that night. But um really and he, I forgot about the walk. And then he, by the way, something that you, you may know about him, I'm sure, is that he does this at his events too, where he he just he's the last person to leave. He's the last person to leave. Every speech I've ever seen him give, he's the last person to leave. He'll just stand there and talk to people. That's how I got to talk mm. to him. He was just standing there waiting for people, and it just stays there as long as it takes until they're like, "Dude, you got." I go. didn't know that. I didn't know. Oh that. my gosh! It's- I know he. That's how he was when he was President Obama's vice president. He was the first guy in the room and the last one to leave. And that's what he was at the State of the Union. And that's what he was. It's what he's been every. And that's another thing people say, like, is this, this that and the other thing about him being senile and infirm and all. I've seen him. I've spoken to him. Like, I've seen the guy. I know mm-hmm. that that's a lie. Everyone who's yeah. ever met him, including these Republicans, know that that's a lie. But they that's whatever they say it anyway. But now he's on. He's now he's Tony Montana. <laughs> all right. OK, last question. If you had to choose between spending the day with Steve Bannon or Stephen Miller, who would you pick and why? Mm. <laughs> You have to go like to lunch, maybe go to Manny Petty, you have to make small talk. Uh, this is <laughs> like a Sophie's Choice thing. Would, I know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Would you rather Although- chop off your foot or chop off your arm? Uh, Don't say that because Stephen Miller would be hungry, probably. Two horrible choices. I'm going to say, uh, damn. It's tough. It's really hard. That's awful. I, I think I I think Steve Bannon maybe creeps me out just a, a little bit less than Stephen Miller. So I'm going to go with Steve Bannon. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I could uh, look past his uh, facial sores and and whatever, because Steve Miller's facial sores are all inside, you know, and that that ugly soul of his makes him more i think uh disgusting to me i think i would have to agree with you and then plus you with bannon you have you really do have the chance the greater chance of him just expiring right in front of you once he like finishes decomposing <laughs> like you might be at lunch and he's in like two martinis and all of a sudden you just <laughs> it's over you know his liver's like nope today's the day but so i feel like that the odds are better there so yeah. that's one upside yeah although you do have to look at him but yeah, and that's it's a really horrible choice. Horrible Thank, choice. Yeah, I tried. I really thankfully, did. I like, thankfully, I will never have to make that choice. Oh my god! Although, honestly, which is going to sound like really self torturous, like inflicting pain upon myself, but I would sit down and talk to Steve Bannon on camera. I would be very, I would actually do that. I would be very interested to see how he handles that. Not that I'm like the toughest person in the world, or like will grill him like. I mean, Tucker grilled Putin. I'm kidding. Um, I just, I, I would just, I just have a lot of questions for him, and I'd be very curious to see if he does finish molting in front of me. But yeah. interesting. I don't know. I mean, that's how I feel about uh, cat turd. No, I'm kidding. I don't feel that way about cat turd. <laughs> I have no interest in meeting cat turd mm, or his many bottles of stored human feces. <laughs> Oi, that's not a real thing, is it? No, but there was that viral picture of him when we finally realized his identity. And there was this picture of him where they, it looks like, I don't know, he looks like a rotten egg. Like he looks like one of those like eggs from this century eggs. Like <laughs> it's brown. And then behind him is a wall of like jars that look like, like it almost looks like the pickle jar um, from um, in, in Living Color. 
that uh, he, he would walk around with. It almost looks like that, but it's yellow. Like the stuff is Ooh. yellow. And my, of course, my speculation is that you know he hoards pee pee because his name is cat turd. So maybe he's got mm. like a, a fetish with you know feces. I don't know. I just I, I like. I don't yeah. I don't. I don't think I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but speaking of Tucker, real fast, did you see he and Chris Cuomo and Tucker the interview? I I did I did see uh, a few snippets of their interview. I don't think I could tolerate um, either of them. I'm so disappointed in in Chris Cuomo, uh, but I do remember getting into a Twitter beef with him. Um, I want to say it was back in uh, 2016, and that was fun. Um, did he yeah, go into was... DMs or did he do it on Twitter? No, no, no. It was on Twitter. It was out out there, and I was like quote tweeting him, and he would quote tweet me back, Ooh. and. It was it was before I was Brooklyn Dad defiant. I was really? just I think I was Brooklyn Dad for Hillary. No way. Yeah, before I was Brooklyn Dad defiant, I was uh uh I had 60 followers at the end of at the end of June 2016. Oh my god. And then when they gave Trump <coughs> the Republican nomination like a flip, a switch flipped in my brain. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I just, I went from tweeting once every couple of weeks to tweeting like three or four times a day. Yeah. And then maybe five or six times it, it kept increasing. And I just started noticing like people were digging what I had to say, what I was putting out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I changed my profile name from, Majid Padellan to Brooklyn dad for number four, Hillary. And, um, and then on November 9th, it was, you know, it was the, uh, the morning of election day when we found out that Hillary had lost, um, you know, everybody in my DM groups was just devastated. And I started seeing a lot of people saying, you know, I'm just going to, you know, pack it in and tuck my head in the sand, my tail between my legs. And because the trolls are going to come after me. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Mm -hmm. So the defiant people think that the defiant is, you know, fighting the power. And no, the defiant was fighting that, that emotional malaise, that giving up that, that, um, that instinct to, to just, surrender yeah i was like fuck that you know let's you know, and i changed my changed my name that day to hmm. brooklyn dad defiant hmm. and I, I never looked back wow i love that because um we can't we can't succumb to that malaise ever like you said and but now we can't we couldn't then um it was really hard not to then because it felt like four years a really long time you're like thinking how old are my kids and it was uh, really, but really depressing and and i love the defiance and we that's the that's what we got to stick with is that mindset because we're not going to go down those dark hole rabbit holes where we imagine trump's presidency but it's not impossible and if it god forbid were to happen uh we have a lot of work to do yeah <laughs> so yeah we can't give up yeah it's funny i wasn't on twitter in 2016, I came on in 2017 because of Trump. I was because I left Facebook because Facebook was a cesspool of MAGA. And I was like, I can't mm. be here. So I was like, what's this Twitter thing all about? And I came on as <laughs> Joe and I was like, no one knows who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but it it that changed my life forever. Um, yeah. And then I was like, who's this defiant guy? He's always in Trump's replies. <laughs> He's always oh, the yeah. top. He's so always the top. I was I was there because I wanted him to uh, to block me. I was I was chasing the that ever elusive uh, Trump block, and I never got it. So many I like so many people part of that exclusive club, and uh, it it was not alas, it was not to be. It was not to be. Yeah, I, I was always like, I want to be at the top of his replies too, and I was like, I'm going to be up there with you guys someday. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got banned. Um, yeah, but but he tried to sell. Truth Social to Elon, which I find very funny. And he won't mm. come back to Twitter because he wants to make Truth Social a thing. But um, that's fine with me. Stay over there. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Well, so everybody can follow you. You said your handle, but say it again because I know that people know who you are. But everybody who's listening to this knows who you are. But so what's your handle again? Because it's not Brooklyn Dad Defiant. 
Oh, no, it is at M.M. Padellan, P-A-D-E-L-L-A-N. Um, and yeah, you can find me on the Twitter. I'm, I'm this. It's the same profile name on Twitter as it is Instagram and the threads. I am, believe it or not, on threads, even though I'm like <laughs> bad at keeping up on that site. Uh, and fun fact for your listeners. Uh, did you ever read my book, uh, The Littlest President? I've, I have not had the honor of reading. I'm going to have yet. to get you a copy of yeah. this. I love it. Uh, and I <laughs> literally just spoke. So you can see there's there's Obama here and Hillary and Nancy Pelosi. And there's fighting Joe, fighting <laughs> Joe right there. There's Putin holding the puppet strings mm. on Spanky McDumbass is the main <laughs> character there. There's uh, Ivanka. There's oh Rudy. There's Eric picking his nose. There's oh. uh, Kellyanne Conway. There is Stephen Miller. Right uh -huh. there as a snake, and there is <laughs> Mitch <laughs> Mitch McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> Who did those illustrations? So uh, a, a young man by the name of John Kelly, ironically. Oh. His name is John Kelly, and I literally just spoke with him yesterday. We are on track to, to producing the sequel to The Littlest Ooh. President. Uh, and it's a scoop, uh, folks. If if all goes well, the littlest president will be uh, available to uh, uh, to to purchase by the end of June. So fingers crossed. Um, Excellent, I love it. it oh, oh that's... and and the name of it is the Bigliest Loser. <laughs> oh, <laughs> perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect. I love it. Some people yeah. say it's the biggest loser of maybe in the history of time. Believe mm -hmm. me. <laughs> that's awesome. We will definitely keep an eye. Keep me up to date on that. And then when that's coming out, come back on and we'll talk about it. And indeed. We'll, yeah. And I want to get the littlest president because I need I need that too in my life. So <laughs> and and I'll pay for it to sign it for me so that I have I have my own copy. You um, and of course we have story time with BDD, which is on live, right? On YouTube. Live on uh Fridays at 5 30 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know how you do it live. It's uh, this is just a lot. It's, it's scary. It's without a net. Yeah, without a net. <laughs> it's brave. It's very brave. Um, well, that does it for this episode of the "Are You Within Kidding Me?" podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Katie. Brett. Um, <laughs> that was the other thing. Over and then decision. <laughs> and her when she said hard decisions, I was like hard. Oh man. Yeah, I, I I watched way too, I watched it way, way too many times. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna somehow make this work. So, yeah, in my video she was doing chores because why not demean her all the way? And I was going to end it with me pretending to give a blowjob. So I was like, and have the camera, oh. and I was gonna like unzip. And I was like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just go all the way here because she brought herself to such a level that I'm gonna just take it that much further. And then I was like. I don't know if TikTok will let me do this. So yeah, I yeah. didn't do the blowjob, but I just, just know how that's in my mind, folks, and how far I'm willing to go. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. That sounds all sorts of wrong. Okay. Well, my thanks <laughs> to my guest, Brooklyn <laughs> Dad Defiant. On that note, I am blushing that you can't tell my Mrs. Rope, Ro but it's true. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Brooklyn for coming on again and talking politics with me this time. We had an incredible conversation that made me cry. No one ever expected that last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a wild and a very important and I think very cathartic conversation, but we never got to politics really. So I was like, this we got to do that again. So Thank this time for... we did. Thank you for having me back, Joe. It's always a pleasure. Oh, well, I really appreciate you. I appreciate seeing you out there being defiant. And um, let's say some you know, positive vibes. Let's send some positive vibes to the New York Yankees because I know mm -hmm. how many people love the Yankees out there and not the Dodgers. Um, that <laughs> Garrett Cole will be fine. And that, yes. that Aaron Judge will be fine. And um, that we have an incredible season and make it uh, all the way to the championship. Just gym. get us to the playoffs. Just get I us just... to the playoffs. And, and uh, the rest will take care of itself. Yes, let's go. Um, and Rizzo's coming back, and I'm so happy. Um, I missed him so much last year. But, okay, well, with that, again, thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you, everybody else, um, for watching, for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time.